Hi, Mark Savage here. Welcome to 2019. It's January. <sighs> it's cold. And it's the first video of this year. What are we going to do today? Well, it's my good old Versus. And you really can't knock these bikes. There's a load of videos of this bike already. This is my third or fourth one now I've had. Um, they are really great fun bikes. Especially this time of year when you don't want too much power. You know, these do 80, 90 mile an hour quite easily, but... When the roads are quite slippy, you don't want to be doing that. So these are great for miles per gallon and sturdy bikes. You sit very upright as well. Now I did do a recent video of these tyres and should you mix and match. I am finding it a little bit slippy. But that's independently. So I'm off a roundabout and the back will have a little slip and the front will have a little slip. That's because how cold it is out there. So you really do have to sort of straighten it, slow down, sod the car behind you and take it easy. Stay off the white stuff as well because at the end of the day, that's where you're going to slip and all manhole covers. So I'm finding it a little bit annoying. I have bought myself another set of Continental Conti Flows. They're going to be put on here very, very soon. So, I'm going to do a service, and that's a must, especially in this sort of weather, keeping on the oil as well. You don't just burn oil in the summer, these sort of bikes do burn oil all year round. Um, especially on the journeys that I sort of do, which is up and down the gears. Um, roundabouts, up and down, and roundabouts and so on. So, a little bit annoying, but you need to keep an eye on your oil. And I say that literally from 50ccs right up. With the big 40s and, you know, 1000ccs, if you're really giving them some, you know, you're changing the oil regularly anyway. This, I don't think, has been done for a while. So, I've got a basic service kit. However, have you noticed my new lights in here? They really are bright. 10 watt. Got with them other bulbs. And also, they do all security lights outside as well. Worthwhile checking out eBay for them. So, what do we need for a very, very basic service? Not a super bike, so a simple hit flow filter will be fine. You can get your Canyon ones. I've had Canyons and these before. You don't notice any difference. So, air filter. Game with the oil filter. I do always stick to Iridium plugs, there's been a debate about that already, whether it's worth getting them, but for these they recommend them, so I've got Iridium plugs. And this bike takes around about nearly 3 litres of oil. So, I've got 3 litres of oil. And the basics of where they are is really simple on here, there's no need to take off fairing parts to get your oil filter changed, and the sump is just really easy, the sump bolt is really easy to get to, bit of WD-40 because it is out in all weathers. Now, I was hearing a little bit of rattling from my bike as well, and I did find that when I looked under a minute ago, the exhaust clamp, well, that's broke. I'll show you in a bit. And I get a little rattle here, and it was somewhere around here, and I kept thinking it was this and this. Turned out to be my clocks. They're a little bit loose. So while I've got these panels off and tank up and so on, I'll be sorting it out today. Here's one for you, though. I've heard of people saying getting water in with your petrol. Now on the peds, you know, I've always said it's impossible, the top goes on. On these sort of bikes, I've sort of chuckled at it. However, it's happened to me. Oh yes. How I hear you ask. <laughs> on Kawasaki, Suzuki's and a lot of bikes nowadays, the petrol cap sits in an area. Let me show you. So as you fill up, there's your petrol bit. But around here, this is for your overflow. And this generally gets petrol, will go out of your bike through a tiny little hole just there. Now the problem I had was the other day I washed my bike. I don't know why I could feel in a few days anyway, but you just feel like you've got to do it sometimes. Especially when you do the old chain. There's another thing that we're going to check today and the brake pad to make sure they're okay. Lubricate your chain, make sure it's the right tension. I've got videos on that. However, when I wash the bike, water can get around here. And it was sitting here. Of course, as I got to the petrol station and lifted the old cap, the water was still there and it went straight into the petrol tank. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever played with petrol and water. You may have played with too many gallons of petrol as a kid. However, water, you'll notice if you put petrol in with water, it sits on the top. So water sinks. It goes straight into your, basically your carb injection system, whatever you've got. Happened to me. So when I got home, I thought the little hole was blocked and I've been jabbing things down there. I dried it all out to try and make sure that not that all the water continued to get into the actual petrol. And I did the stupid thing as well. I sort of poured a bit of petrol on top as I dripped it out and then put more water in there. So what I got <laughs> on... Now, not that you ever want to get water in with your petrol, but if you've got a, a four-cylinder bike, you know, a race bike, you get a bit of water in there, you race it down the road, you get a bit of a splutter and it quickly dissipates and it's gone. Little twos like this one is, um, I got a bit of water in there, it went straight into the carbs, 
and I had a little bit of a spluttering and it quickly dissipated. When you've got a little bike like a 125 or, or a single pot, that's only got one carb and the water will go straight in, straight into your carburetor, suck it up and you're going to stall. You're not going to be able to keep the revs up. You dare take the bike apart, most of the little 125s, except the Lex Moto ones that I had recently, you can get to the bottom of the carb and there's a drain screw. Literally under the drain screw and let as much of the petrol flood air. And I mean, you know, a couple of cupfuls, get rid of it all. Because the water will always sink straight through, turn it back up again, give it some, give it some, and it will start and hopefully you haven't got to take the carburetor apart and mess around. So simple tip there. For this one here, when I take the tank up, I'm expecting to find there's a pipe. Now the pipe, the little hole there, there's a pipe that goes through the tank to the floor and lets the petrol, excess petrol go out. And of course, because I've got water in there, because I washed it, I'm thinking it's blocked. So when I get the tank up today to do the uh, spark plugs and the air filter, I'm expecting to find it blocked, kinked, anything like that. So when you do a service, make sure that pipe, or even if there isn't a pipe on there, make sure it's off. Now the worry that is that if it's not on there and you overspill your petrol, and it'll go straight onto a red hot engine and possibly onto exhaust. You could be getting a, a, a bit of a fire problem there, couldn't you? So make sure the pipe's there. Right, let's go on with this very simple service, but you know, generally keep your bike serviced and it will keep running. Now, recently I bought these little lights and I stuck them on here for the winter. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're not going to light the world up, but it's just to let other road users know that I'm on the road because they're LED ones. <laughs> and I don't know if you've noticed, <coughs> but it's. Uh, it's, it's taped up basically because whilst riding home it did this sort of thing and I was very unimpressed with that it's got three little pop rivets in there and they uh j I don't know I just started to break rot away I don't know but I'm going to take this off put I'll take the front off put some new screws in there this is the problem when you buy things from China where everything comes from really you <laughs> You do get what you pay for. They were cheap. I think actually, stop the smell of petrol. I think actually I'm going to buy another set today and uh, I'm just going to bodge these up for the time being and I'll buy another set and fit them on there that are a bit more robust in this sort of weather. Because once the road salt gets on anything here, it just rusts it straight off. Horrible stuff, but keeps you from falling off, I suppose, when riding on the road. Right, let's get on with this very basic service. Let's fix that one and uh, let's get all this off and show you what I'm talking about. Also, don't forget, you can just about see it in there. Check your water and antifreeze. It is something that so many people forget to check. And don't think when you get your basic instrument service, which is just an oil change, they're going to check that. They're not. That's what you get your full service for. So I've got antifreeze, oil, spark plugs and air filter. Check the pads and check the chain and grease it up, oil it up. I don't love the Scott Oiler ones on here now. I don't love them. And then the tyres, I mean, there's still tread on there and there's quite a bit on the back one. But I went for these Contiflows because they say they warm up really quickly. You know they're not going to last as long. But in this weather, I want my tyres to warm up quickly so I have some grip and not last forever and have no grip and come off. Right, let's get on with it, as I say. I don't know if you remember, I did a couple of services out on the front. Um, it was a big custom bike and a Ducati Multistrada and I bought this little kit. As I said, at the time it was, I don't know, 20 odd quid. Really is amazingly handy to have and so much easier than one of those clamps. I did buy one of these before and they're, they're okay but hard to get grip sometimes. And you do have the old chain which I just hate. And the other idea was to smash a screwdriver through it and bend it round and so on but these are amazing. I suppose the hardest thing is just to find which one does it. You know, it's a bit of a guessing game, but you know, it just slots on there, nice, so nice like that. A lot, lot easier and guaranteed to get it off. So that is my top tip, amazing. Now, let me show you underneath this quickly. I mean, it's a 70mm socket to get the sump um, bolt out anyway. I want to show you what I found underneath. So while looking under here, I've been hearing this annoying rattle. I mean, that's not going to come off because it's pretty much um, rusted and welded on there. But I'm going to cut that off because that rattling, you know, you're just going to hear it. Nice and easy. Get the old filter off. And there's your sump plug, which we're going to get off in a minute.
try not to drop the old uh, bolt in the uh, oil pot. Happens as it happens. And that will just slot on there like that. A little tap. And then we'll get the old socket on there and get that straight off. In the kit it comes with this little spanner you can tap round or the wrench itself. Such a good kit. Go and buy one. If you do a couple of services you've made your money back. Come on, look at that. How simple is that? And you know you've been bashing around before trying to get these off. Really, really, really simple. No, I haven't got shares in it. You don't have to get such a big one of these, like this massive one here. Um, but for the price of it, I love them. On there's a copper washer. I'm replacing that as well. I bought a pack of them, eight quid or so. Um, you know, and same for this little bit here. It's just an eBay job. Just as I said before, check the bloody seller. You know, I'll, I'll throw so many now things I'm buying. You know, three day delivery and then it's from China and I'm waiting for two months. Oh, does get me. Anyway, oil's draining out, which is brilliant. While that's draining out, I'm gonna fix this little light here as well. And in the day, who would use a pot with it anyway, but that's a lot, lot better. I mean, you know, four little nuts and bolts. What would that have took rather than pop with it? That would look a lot better. Now, knowing that this side supposedly broke three of these little ones, and I mean, you just don't know how they're made, do you? I'm going to check the other side and see, and pull it around a little bit, because I don't want that snapping on me. Because what happened, when it broke, it flapped this way, and I was shining the road behind me, I guess. So, that wasn't clever. But nice and simple. I mean, are these great? Well, honestly, it's just a little white glow down the side of the road. But I just thought I liked the idea of it, so that's why I bought them for, and they were only cheap. Yeah, that's nice and easy, pop back on, shining the road up. There's the oil nicely draining out, and there's the, it was a high flow as well, so, a high flow, so uh, replacing like for like. Now, as I say in my videos, don't be afraid, take panels off, you know, make sure you know where all the nuts and bolts are. I'll tell you what to be more afraid of, be more afraid of where you put them when you've taken them off. Have a safe place, put all your nuts and bolts and everything that you're going to use in one safe place and also try and keep side to side because sometimes the way they're screwing can be different that's what I always do I put them down in this bloody shed of mine and I can't find them so hence left right and bits and bobs are the tools I need I used to keep about four or five screwdrivers somewhere potted around here so I could pick one up each time <laughs> anyway it's starting to go apart my only tip about these is these little pop rivets here these sort of clips they do snap the older the bike gets and uh, don't want to be snapping them. So do give them a bit of a wiggle. If it's freezing cold, use an old hair dryer heat gun just to warm the area first. It will stop you snapping them because then you've got to try and drill through a screw and push it in and heat gun it and just be careful. Right, progress. Next, tank off. And then, then hey, it's realistically everything that you need is there. Now, as I suspected when I said to you about the um, water going in with my petrol, as I lifted the tank, all that came out. And this here is the pipe that was just kinked. Can you see? Just poorly fitted, basically. See, it fits on there. Obviously, the rusty one. And the person just poorly fitted it. Which meant that, unfortunately, Water stayed in there, and these two pipes just go down and should have uh, gone down to there. So there was definitely two there. One is empty, one works, and one didn't. So when I'm putting this back on, I'm going to make sure that it's free. I may even have to cut it because that looks like it's been uh, bent too much. I'll have a look. No, no, look, that'll that'll just fold out again. So I'll pull that down this time when it comes down, and that will stop that water that's been sitting in that pipe for a long while. Uh, Mixing with my petrol. Don't forget about these little bits here, okay? I've done a video. Make sure I unclip them sensibly. If you break them, you're going to stop something from working, which could be a fuel gauge or something worse. And we just got to undo a little clip there and then get the tank off. And there's the airbox. Airbox has to come up and plugs underneath. Really, really simple. This little clip here is really bloody important. Do not snap it, okay? Just pick it both sides, push it backwards and then pull off nice and easy. These two are the live and negative and fuel gauge and so on, but that's the important one. And there's the airbox. Water looks good actually, doesn't it? I mean, I did top it up before. Um, I'm not gonna drain it out now. I might do a summer job of that. Just getting to the airbox and the plugs under here now. 
you can really see how simple it is. Saving money, couple of hours on a Saturday morning, and it will run a, a lot nicer again. This is still running okay, I must admit. I'm going to wait and see the spark plugs and see how dirty they are because I've got no idea, no service history. I've got no idea how long we've been in here for. So they could have been done just 4,000 miles. They could have done 12,000 miles. Um, still doing good miles to the gallon because these do do good miles to the gallon. Let's look and I'll show you in a minute. So easy. Plugs are located down here. You see your floats in there. It's not too bad if you want to see there. Now, these are your coil pack little thingies. I strongly suggest that you grease these when putting them back because they can get stuck in. Now all in, I'm pleasantly happy that this bike was serviced for the last owner. There's the plugs, and there's the new ones. So these have done probably 8,000 miles, but it's been running really well. Both sides are exactly the same, which means I know that the pistons are healthy. As for the air filter, pretty dirty to be honest with you. I'm glad I'm changing that. As for the oil, well it's always going to be black, but that is quite black. So there we go, a really really simple little look into a little Versus. I do love them, little 650s, they're great little bikes. I'm going to take the clocks off, because um, that rattling that's peeing me off. I'm also going to cut that bit I showed you earlier from the exhaust, stop that rattling as well. I don't know if it's just me, I'm riding on and you're like, where's it coming from? Just do that and you start holding things and looking around and try and twist your head and lift your visor up and is that just me? <laughs> Am I crazy? Do I hear voices? <laughs> I'm gonna take it, I'm not the only one that hears these little rattles and keeps like blinking independently while they're, they're rattling. So I found two and let's hopefully that's all of them there. Sort that, sort that. Let's get the uh, oil filter back on, fill it full of oil. Remember to test, so go around the block and then make sure it's topped up properly. Put the new plugs in, grease the old coil packs, just grease around it because they get stuck in. They are a bugger to get out and I do mean you snap this off and you're going to have to pay for another one. So don't do that. Just a bit of grease on there, I know it will heat up anyway but just keeps it hopefully sticking in next time you do another serve. Maybe sometimes you're in plugs, 8,000 miles odd easy. Um, sort the air filter out, put it all back together. Top tip though, make sure you get them pipes not kinked. And you get them pipes back on um, from the air filter box and so on. And then put it all back together again and then test. Now before you put it back together, look, again, kinked. And I've put that straight and loads of oil's come out of here because it wasn't breathing. Clean this out, clean there, spray it if you have to. Um, I'm going to take this off because I can see there's oil in there. And I just took it off a second ago and it was dripping. So for example, that just comes out. Ugh. And look, see that's oil. It's because it wasn't breathing. So let's get rid of all this crappy bit of oil in here, clean it all up, stick it back together again. But that little kink when it wasn't breathing, it was sucking a bit of oil through. Well worth doing this little cleany bit. It's funny because when they do this bit here as well, they do it so one screw takes the filter out. But you sort of look at it and think, well, you've got to take it out anyway, haven't you? So anyway, stop this bloody oil dripping everywhere. Let's uh Get it out. Bike is outside. And we are ready to test. Don't be frightened if it turns over and doesn't start straight away. Remember you've had it all apart. One little tip I will give. Not so much on this Kawasaki, but on the Jacks and so on. The sump plug is right over the actual exhaust. Now, a little trick I always do. A bit of aluminium, or if you're in America, aluminum. Aluminium, that will do here. Um, put that over the exhaust um, and that stops any oil going onto it and then throw it away, nice clean exhaust. My top tip, aluminium foil or aluminium. Semi, semi. Oh, I'd understand you Americans. Anyway, <laughs> I'll put about two and a half litres in her. I'm going to turn her over, let her run for a bit and then test top up. And we are job done. Not bad. Ignition on, clutch in. There's some little rubbish little lights, but um, yeah, they're all right. You're always gonna get moisture this time of year in there. Head gasket, nothing's not gone. 
and we're going to test that. Well, I'm going to let that run now. Test, job done. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. I'll keep making them. Take care of yourselves on these roads. Next one up will be tyres.